everyone, Mickey here. I thought it would be fun to share with you what it's like being an INTJ female. I won't go too into detail as to what INTJ is, but that stands for introvert, intuitive thinking, judging, it is one of the rarest things for a female to test as. Only 05 to 0.8% of women have tested as INTJ according to the internet the last time I checked. But I am not an expert on the subject. I don't know everything there is to know about the Meyer Briggs personality test. I am only speaking of my own experiences and the things that I have gone through and how I found it's related to me being an INTJ. So to start, growing up as a little girl and being an INTJ, even when I didn't know what that was, was purely tragic. I wasn't into playing with baby dolls. I wasn't into playing house. I did not dream of getting married. I did not dream of having a family. And I never really found um, babies particularly cute. I do like children, but I, I like that children want to learn. I, I find that really endearing when anybody wants to learn. So I, it's not because they're kids, I guess. I don't know. But my mindset has always been different compared to the other women that I've met, and especially when I was a little girl, because I wasn't into pink frilly things, and this was very concerning for the adults of my life. Even though my mom is a single mom and is very business savvy and was all about her career, I was a quiet child, introverted, and INTJs are one of the heaviest introverts out there among all the introverted personality types so I like to play by myself and didn't really participate in class and you can imagine what the teachers thought on top of that I've always worn a lot of black and that is always a super red flag to adults I just don't like having to think about what I'm going to wear, and black matches everything. Um, and that's just my style, that's my aesthetic, and that's been my aesthetic since I was old enough to create one and have a mind of my own. But teachers would pull me aside, and they would give me little prep, you know, pep talks like teachers tend to. And um, I found it insulting that they were always insinuating that I didn't know who I was and I was going through a phase. And I would always respond, well, I know who I'm not. And I very quickly got the reputation of being rebellious and a problematic child. Even though I never caused any problems in school, I, all eyes were on me every year at school. My mom was always being called, and they were always so concerned about me. And eventually, that did lead to depression and anxiety. That led to a not really an identity crisis, but I felt like it wasn't okay to be myself. And the only way I could survive and I could get all the attention off of me was to, on some level put on a facade or a front so people would just leave me the hell alone. And that, uh, that ability to slap on a mask and put forth the qualities that I know people are going to like and pull back on the best qualities of an INTJ, but the qualities that people won't like and that are going to be misunderstood has carried me through life. Badger, please don't attack my phone. Please don't. But it's carried me through life. And it all started from when I was a little girl. My friends' parents thought I was corrupting their children. They thought I was such a bad kid. Even though they had no logic, they had nothing to base that off of. I wasn't encouraging their children to talk back to their parents. I wasn't encouraging their children to do drugs or have sex. I was not responsible for anything that their children did because I wasn't even there when they were doing it. 
I was immune to peer pressure growing up because I am an INTJ. And maybe some INTJs do, do cave in. And I think that, you know, wouldn't be completely outlandish. Um, but because we're ostracized, it would make sense that some INTJs would cave in because anybody, no matter who you are, wants to be liked and wants to be loved. And when it's clear that who you are isn't good enough for others or you're constantly being misunderstood, it can lead to a lot of resentment and a lot of bitterness. And it can lead to an INTJ just giving up on trying to connect with people or giving up on themselves to connect with people, even if it's not real. Um, I went the stop trying to connect with others route in my life. Because when you have adults bullying you for you just being yourself and for you having the confidence to be yourself when everybody else is telling you there's something wrong with you, it just makes me do it harder. INTJs are known to be rebellious. We're known to, you could tell us um, to do a certain thing, but if we don't agree with you, typically we are not going to do the thing. And when I got to high school and I learned what an INTJ was, and I was reading about the characteristics, analytical, seemingly cold, um, you know, very logical, and how rare it was for a female to be INTJ. At the time, I wasn't impressed. I was like, well, I knew all these things. I already knew I was misunderstood. I've literally been living this my whole life, and I just dismissed it. But looking back now, it makes a lot of sense, right? When a friend a few years later mentioned the Meyer Briggs personality test and they asked me what I got and I told them INTJ, they weren't the least bit surprised. They looked at me and they were just like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then I had to take it again for work last year, <laughs> and I got INTJ. Anytime I've ever taken any version of the test, official and unofficial, I've always gotten INTJ, and I've always been very high, very high introverted. Last time it was 97%. And, you know, none of that was surprising to me. But to my coworkers, that was very surprising, because in their eyes, I'm bright and I'm happy and I'm a little dramatic, you know, in a humorous sort of way. And it's not that I'm not those things, but it goes back to what I said earlier that since I was a little girl, I learned how to put the qualities people want to see forward and the qualities people don't want to see. I, le I learned to pull them back and dial it down. I learned how to talk to people where they can understand, where they can follow. I learned how to comfort people on some level, which basically just means I hold my opinions back and I just go really quiet because I don't know what else to do. But a lot of, you know, people appreciate that, especially when they know what I really want to do is dissect the problem and find a solution. And they know that I'm being quiet because I'm trying very hard not to do that because I know they don't like it. Uh, my friends that I do have appreciate that, but it's very painful for me. It's very hard and it's very difficult, especially trying to connect with someone romantically when you can't be yourself. You know, I have had boyfriends tell me I was too much like a guy, um, which I find very offensive. I don't really like characteristics to be stuck with the gender. Like, what does that even mean? It, when you're having a bad day and I want to sit down with you and find solutions or you're upset with me and I want to sit down and find solutions to that problem instead of crying and being in a fight with you, how is that like a guy? I've met plenty of men that are emotional. I'm very confident, open with those emotions. And does that mean they're like a girl? I don't like that stigma. But a lot of INTJ females are 
outside of this little tiny suffocating box and were ostracized for it. And now as an adult, I haven't quite found that place where I fit. I haven't found anybody that speaks my language. Even in high school, when there was a girl who got INTJ, we were so vastly different, we weren't speaking the same language. I've never found that. I found people that have accepted me as much as they can, but it still feels like, like I'll never be able to just fully be myself. And maybe that's a universal problem and that's not an INTJ problem, but I can only speak for myself and the people that I've spoken with. And I've met people that they've told me, you know, they've never gone through any of those things. They've never experienced it. They just find, they meet people, they connect with people, they date those people, they break up, they move on, they find somebody else and they connect with that person. And it's, it's onward. It just goes on and on and on. And I'm not like that. I've never been like that. I've never been someone that connects with people easily. So being an INTJ female is very special. It's, it's rare, but it also at times feels like a burden because it seems against nature when other people, um, according to other people, it seems against nature. We just are not a stereotypical woman and it confuses the people in our lives, it confuses our families, it confuses the people we try to date and um, we just get by the best we can and try to stay true to ourselves the best we can. So with that said, if you are an INTJ female and I've said anything in this video that you related to, please comment that down below. Tell me a little bit about yourself and some of your experiences. And if you've overcome them, how did you overcome that? Um, if you're married, how, just how, just how, how, how do you do it? How do you people? If you are an INTJ, please tell me, how do you people? Because I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too boring just listening to me uh, chat a little bit about my life and how being an INTJ has affected it. Um, please comment down below. Please give the thumbs up. Please subscribe if you would like more content like this. If you have any video ideas or you would like for me to talk a little bit more about what it's like being an INTJ or what an INTJ is more specifically, Please also comment that down below and I'll do my best to make that happen. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.